G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. Welcome, everyone. Today, I'm interviewing Henry Stewart of Happy Co, based in London in the UK. And today, we're going to be discussing tips on how to create a happy, productive workplace. So, thanks for your time, Henry. Thank you, Michael. Um, yeah, we're just having a quick chat uh, before the, the podcast, and um, we actually met, well, not haven't met before, we, I actually came across you on Dominic Monkhouse's uh, podcast, mm. which I listen to regularly, and he has some great guests, and a few months ago, uh, you were his guest, and I was, uh, I love the, the topic, and I think it's so relevant for any workplace. Um, cause I think Absolutely. Like, certainly, uh, what I, no doubt every business owner and leaders and managers would uh, be certainly trying to aspire to and, and provide a happy, productive workplace. So yeah. Um, so tell our audience a bit about you and your experience on this topic then, Henry. Okay. Um, so I've been running Happy for 35 years. Um, uh, we've got 22 staff and 50 associates, and um, we came in the top two in uh, the Best Workplace Awards last year. So I think uh, we we know a lot about this topic. And Absolutely. what we do is we help all, we help other organisations create happy workplaces. Uh, so that is, that's uh, really great stuff that we do, in, in mainly in the UK, but we've done some in the Australia as well. Yeah, awesome. So uh, you're certainly not the, the plumber with the le- leaky tap then. You certainly uh, <laughs> do what you sort of no, tell Steve. people to do. <laughs> <laughs> which is always which is always good lead by example right um yeah absolutely so maybe just sort of unpack then what you see as sort of a happy productive workplace looks like um and maybe some initiatives for our listeners uh, that they can sort of introduce into their workplace okay so i'll i'll share with you three tips to how to create a happy productive workplace first one is give your people trust Um, people work best when they're trusted and given freedom to make uh, to decide their own uh, to make their own decisions Um, and there's one great example of that I talk about about pre-approval so often where when you give somebody uh, the chance to do something to solve a problem to come up with a solution they then have to come back uh to you for approval and what i say is is don't do that approve the solution before they've thought of it now that 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 might uh, might sound a bit odd um but let me give you a couple of examples yeah. so we had a we had a uh somebody and uh as manager of our cafe who was 19 years old and wanted to improve the cafe so what we didn't do was say um uh show us a report and we'll think about it we didn't form a committee what we did do was agree a budget checked and understood the values of the organization then left her to do it for herself and i saw it the first time when she'd already done it but imagine what she felt three months into her first job 19 years old walking into her cafe and and absolutely her cafe not a cafe that somebody else had done something with and somebody had done something else with um she felt immensely proud um and what i what i ask people um is three questions do you like to be told what to do do you like complete freedom or do you like freedom within guidelines and what there's nobody likes to be told what to do there's a few anarchists who like complete freedom <laughs> um and but mainly people like freedom within guidelines they like to have the framework within which they work so so and that's really great for if you're you know the, the, an owner of a small business you can give that framework you can give the guidelines but then you give people freedom freedom within it yeah that's a, a good tip i guess um, so providing those guidelines um obviously it depends on the role and in, in, in the business um have you got any sort of tips around where you a business owner would start um, as far as, say it's, um, I don't know, a sales role, for example? Um, 
uh, in a sales role well it, basically you 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 kind of work out which what are the frameworks what are the guidelines for that for for that role you know that, so we're, so at happy we have a set of values you know there you know things like believe the best celebrate mistakes um uh delight the customer uh and as long as you're working within those values then then it all works fine you know and i think it was uh, i think uh, it was the brother of, of Walt Disney said, you know, if you have great values, anybody can make a decision. Mm. Yeah. Well, so the values so, are, so are a guideline in itself, right? Absolutely. Shall I give you another example of, yeah. uh, you know, we, so um, uh, we, uh, we've got a website, obviously. Um, and in the early days of the website, I used to be very involved. You know, I would be say, hey, can we have this? Can we do that? Can we take this away? Can we put that in? So the person in charge of the website never really felt in charge of the website. So we decided to pre-approve it. Um, now, that, as I say, it didn't it didn't mean just complete freedom. We had a branding exercise to uh, to, uh, to establish the colours and whatever. We agreed the metrics, how many people would... Uh, uh how many people how many uh people it would have and how uh and uh the income that would be generated um we put johnny on the best search ending optimization course and we also insisted he'd be talking to the clients we didn't know need to know what the clients were saying but we need to know he was he was having those conversations and I, when i saw that website for the first time the night before it launched I wasn't that pleased with it. I thought, what's this and what's that and why is that there? But it was completely within the guidelines, so up it went. Um, and when we got the metrics a couple of months later, uh, visitors had trebled and income had doubled, even without the benefit of my expertise. And that that's the key thing, you know, it, as the owner of the business, um, I've learned over many years that I'm not always the best person uh, to know what to do. You know, I that uh, that it's that you need to trust your people, and the, your people will decide uh, what needs to be done. Yeah, and it's certainly a challenge with uh, small business owners because they um, one wear a lot of hats typically, and tend to have that uh, sort of micromanagement mindset exactly so. exactly you have to avoid you have to get rid of that micromanagement so there's an interesting interesting uh, uh example from google google decided to work out what are the best most important behaviors of management it's called project oxygen and they came up with eight behaviors you know things like vision uh communication um show interest in your people empower don't micromanage be a good coach um and they ranked them they ranked them in order. And do you know what the top one was? Any thoughts, Michael? Um, from, from those ones? For, be a good coach, communication, vision, empower, don't micromanage, show interest in your people. Be, well, I'd meant show interest in your people and empowerment would be. No well, the, the, show interest in your people was third, empowerment was second. Number one was be a good coach. OK. OK. And that's what, you know, if you can create a coaching culture within your organisation, then you can you can make a huge difference to it. And that's the, the key one, of the key elements that we encourage in in our clients. Be a coach. Don't tell people what to do. Instead, uh, build confidence, ask questions, help people to find their own solution. Yes. And um, like you say, yeah, the foundational piece of that sort of comes back to trust, which you were talking about before. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. If you trust your people, you've got to trust your people. If you trust your people, then any anything is good. Anything That's is, right. is fine. So you've got trust and the guidelines and away you go. Um, Absolutely. Trust is an interesting one, isn't it, both in business and in, in life. Um, so if you've got sort of <laughs> one one little nugget you could sort of uh, impart on our listeners about how you can sort of help build trust within a, a business step back step back so you know i i as a uh, head of the of the company try to make as few decisions as possible okay 
And once when I did that, you know, I, I did that in about 2017. I was, it was based on on uh, a guy called David Marquette. I don't know if you know him. He was the right. uh, commander of a U.S. Navy submarine, um, and he found that his that uh, the the uh, training he'd done didn't work for this for this particular submarine. So he decided. Um, instead of him telling 135 crew members what to do, he would get the he would uh, get the crew members to decide what to do. So you had 135 people deciding what to do, and um, he spoke at a at a, a conference in Copenhagen, which I was also speaking at. And I thought, wow, that's that sounds amazing. So since 2017, I have tried to make as few decisions as possible. Before that, we were flatlining our revenue. After that, um, it grew by 25% a year um, because people, uh, once I stepped back, people found real accountability, real responsibility and really stepped up. So I would say stop making decisions if you're if you're a business owner. Yeah, that's a good tip. I've seen it uh, quite regularly, actually, where I guess the, the business owner is actually the choke point. And I think principally because exactly. of what you're saying. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, they, um, yeah. They, they try to make too many decisions and they they muffle um, everybody else's uh, abilities um, and motivation, more importantly. And I guess that sort of flows back to, you know, having a happy workforce, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And my, my third tip would be uh, get people to play to their strengths. Um, uh, Gallup has done an interesting piece of work on this where they, they asked over a million people, do you get to do what you're best at? every day at work and I, i'm not quite sure what the australian figure is but in the uk it's one in six get to do what they're best at every day right right um and w- whereas those who do get to do what they're best at are 30 to 40 percent more productive so at happy we take it we we we, uh, we recruit to a job description and then we throw it away and we work out what their actual talent is so, you know, we have we have a set of teams and in each team, um, they'll off, what they'll often do is they'll put up their every six months, they, they will put up their roles on a on a post-it on the wall and then people will work out which roles they want to, over the next six months based on their strength, based on what they're great at. Um, uh, yeah, and, so, and that works really well. Be the change you want to see in your business. Become more productive and less stressed with our free Transform Your Performance online course. Once you see the benefits, put your entire team through the course at no cost. We start out by telling you the secret to guaranteed success. Then over 100 lessons help you be more focused, present, productive, and feel more in control about work. Growasmallbusiness.com Which makes sense, doesn't it, um, when you sort of, thing about it. it's like in um in in sport i reckon there's a lot of similarities it's like um i'm not sure if you follow cricket but if you're an opening bowler mm-hmm. you're not going to be you're not going to be hoping the batting typically as well right exactly exactly whereas if, if in our workplace often we try to get people to do everything whereas yeah exactly you wouldn't get an opening bowler to want to, to, to do to, to you if if you were doing that in in cricket, you'd say, "Oh, you're 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 a great bowler, but that's not good enough. You need to be a great batter." No, that's nonsense, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, coincidentally it's good timing because the uh, the Ashes start, uh, I think, uh, in a week or so. So, oh, do they? Uh, oh. Yes, over, <laughs> over there. So there you go. <laughs> I've um... well, we're doing rather well at the moment in in England, aren't we? Yes, yes. Well, uh, we haven't been going the best, so it should be interesting. Um, you, you've. Um, I think on that last po- that podcast I listened to, you talked about uh, a four day work week, um, which is recently getting a lot more airplay, certainly in, in Australia and globally. Um, mm-hmm. So, what's sort of your experience um, with that, and uh, I guess the 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 benefits um and maybe some of the traps that could be uh, come with it okay so the key to the uh, uh four day workplace is 180 100 you have 100% of the salary for 80% of the work 8% of the hours as long as you're 100% as productive okay 
And that's that's the key of it for, for the pilots that have been going on in the UK. Um, so we've done a six month pilot to work out are people 100 percent as productive. And in certainly at Happy, they absolutely are. You know, we have had a 40 percent increase in sales last year, 15 percent this year with no increase in staff. OK, so the staff get a great day off. They get they get to, to have a great time um, and they they are as productive as they were before. And I, I can tell you that we've just had our employee engagement survey this week um, and it's been the best in 27 years. Um, the, and that's probably a lot to do with the four day week because people are, are really enjoying it. So it's a win win. It's a win for the uh, win for the staff and it's a win for the uh, for the company because we get to, we get to be as productive and probably more so than before I assume um, as businesses um, embark on that there's a, a bit of work around um, I guess getting rid of non-productive uh, stuff that typically <laughs> crop, crop up in uh, your week um, exactly so a bit of exactly. discipline that- around that that's the key point, you know. Over five days, you can you can do all you know. If you especially if you're working longer hours, you you get all sorts of, of non-productive stuff. But if you work focused on four days, um, we do a, a productivity blitz, which it really focuses people on you know uh, what, what what is your focus, uh, working on meetings and dealing with email overload. And if you can get all of those things tight and and done right, you can you can get some really good productive results. Which then, I guess, leads to, you know, people being able to play to their strengths and, and doing the things they love. Uh, exactly. The workplace. Um, it sort of s- snowballs by the, um, by the sound of it. It does it? indeed. It does indeed. So, so those are my three key tips. Play to your strengths. Um, be trusted to, to make your own decisions and have, have managers as a coach. Yes, that makes makes a lot of sense. Um, have you just um, got one story around uh, a business that you can share with us um, to illustrate? Um, yes, um, we've got. Uh, uh, um, well, actually, one one in Australia, um, Macquarie Telecom. Uh, Luke Clifton uh, was in was in charge of that, and. Uh, he taught what he said about uh where, where they created happy workplaces um his share price went from uh i think it was five dollars to fifteen dollars in a couple of years um and that's based on it's i mean there's a, there's a lot of other stuff apart from the happy workplace but he had attributed that to it becoming a happy workplace yeah well wow. And um, so that was a client you work with over a period of time um, to create Absolutely. that sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which no doubt came back to those uh, three tips you, you mentioned before. Um, yeah, so the, um, it, I, I guess it's, you know, having a happy workplace, as you say, is is so critical as you just unpacked it um, and obviously leads to, you know, People playing their strengths, there's better productivity. Like you said, it flows ultimately through to the bottom line for the business. Yeah. And um, why wouldn't you want a happy workplace? Absolutely. Particularly if it's more productive. Why, you know, um, I mean, we haven't lost, uh, we, you know, we haven't lost, well, we've, we've had 4% uh, uh, turnover in over the last five years, you know, and last year we haven't lost anybody. Um, we, you know, it's, it's just a great culture to work in if you have a happy workplace. So why do which this is uh, the the fascinating thing for me because there's been lots of I guess studies and research done and I, there was I think a, one in four years ago by Gallup which was Australian globally that found that only fourteen percent of employees were engaged in the workforce now that's a <laughs> staggering number right so you know all, having a happy workplace just makes sense. And it would add up to tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars um, mm-hmm. for yeah. for businesses. So, so what's what's the biggest uh, sort of roadblock have you found 
I mean, you mentioned some tips. What's the biggest challenge that businesses find to actually create a happy workplace? Well, there is the issue of micromanagement. There is the issue of people being told what to do. And the problem is that once you start doing that, once you start on the road of micromanagement and telling people what to do, um, you can't get away from it. And you, you know, and you, you, you think that people, you, people haven't got, uh, uh, you know, good ideas, haven't got creativity, haven't got imagination, because you're continually telling them what to do. Whereas if you step back and allow people to have that imagination, that is ideas, that is creativity. Um, I, I think it's absolutely tragic that most organisations, like you say, uh, uh, disengage their people, um, whereas you could have truly engaged uh, stuff. And the happy, the, the great workplaces are far more productive than the unhappy workplaces. The, the research is absolutely clear. Yeah, it just uh, makes a lot of sense. But as you say, it's sort of uh, staggering the stats that obviously the majority of businesses don't really appreciate nor understand. So I guess uh, that's where you know a business like yourself is uh, can be so important and, and make a big difference. So it's um, yeah, it's it's, it's great uh, hearing those hearing the, those tips and and stories. So just to, to wrap up. Henry, what's one thing, you know, a, a business owner can do after listening to this to uh, get the ball rolling to start creating their happy workplace? Trust your people. Absolutely trust your people. Step out of decision making and give people pre-approval. Yep. So with the guidelines, as you say, and um, I guess it's, yep. uh, it's like anything, it's just a matter of uh, practice, 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 and, and uh, you, you should get the rewards. Exactly, and if you if you need help with it, feel free to come to us. Absolutely. So um, I, I think uh, now people listen to that. There's uh, certainly uh, yourself as a as a good option, and and the Grow Small Business um, Business Transformation Program that we're launching is um, is all about people, which sort of sits in nicely Excellent. with what you're talking about as well. So. Hopefully, between ourselves and others out there, we can uh, help create more happy workplaces and and uh, create a, a better business environment. Absolutely, our aim is to have uh, is to make the happy workplace the norm and not the exception. Yeah, I love it. Well, thanks for your time, mate. Thank you. And for our audience, we'd greatly appreciate a review in iTunes or whatever platform you listen to us on. More reviews means we bubble up higher in iTunes, etc. So more business owners looking for podcasts to help with their growth will find us.